Hi, this is Sean with Protect the Trust again, and today I wanted to talk about a feature that is available in most Office 365 uh, tenants that you can use to improve your email security posture without a whole lot of configuration. Um, in the Microsoft 365 Defender portal, which you would get to uh, by going to security.microsoft.com as a global admin in your tenant, uh, if you then go to email and collaboration and policies and rules, and then threat policies, you'll see that you have an, a number of uh, policies that are available in here to do things like anti-phishing, anti-spam, anti-malware, depending on the licensing that you have available in your tenant. Uh, if you have Microsoft Defender for Office 365, then you will also have these additional policies for safe attachments and safe links. But today, the thing that I wanted to talk about are the preset security policies. Preset security policies are available to um, all Office 365 tenants that have either uh, Exchange Online Protection or any of the licenses that include uh, Microsoft Defender for Office 365, such as uh, Microsoft 365 E5 licenses, or you can also get Defender for Office 365 as a standalone license that you add on to other licenses. Um, but uh, even with Exchange Online Protection, you have the preset security policies available. Um, you just don't have all of the same features that are uh, available. So uh, to begin with, I'm just going to go in and look at the standard protection preset security policy. So uh, in order to enable it, I have to select this option here for manage protection settings. And when I do that, it's going to take me through a wizard. It's very, very simple to set up. And uh, by doing this, um, <coughs> any organization that has a uh, uh, exchange online protection or those ad additional licenses that I was talking about, um, you can go in and set up um, custom policies. I'm going to back back out to that for a second. So if we went into threat policies and anti-phishing, anti-spam, like if we went into our anti-spam policies and, uh, you know, went and looked at our anti-spam inbound policy, there are policies that you can go in here and configure, but uh, the settings here, there's a lot of settings to configure and a lot of people just don't want to deal with going in and, and setting up all these settings. That's where the preset security policies are really useful. So you can just go in and create, uh, basically enable the standard protection policy for everyone in your organization. And it gives everyone a, a, a fairly decent uh, baseline of protection uh, against um, uh, spam and phishing and uh, just basically, you know, bad content coming into your, uh, into your tenant over email. So here I'm going to go again to uh, manage protection settings. And I'm going to just kind of like walk through the wizard real quick. It's it's pretty simple. In this case, we're going to apply protection to all recipients. And if I wanted to, I could ex exclude some users. But in this case, I'm not. I'm just going to apply it to everybody. Since the tenant that I'm in right now has Defender for Office 365, there are some additional features that are available here. Um, realistically, uh, you know, here at Protected Trust, we would recommend if you have Defender for Office 365, you know, if you're paying for that additional, for those additional licensing, then you should probably go in and enable, uh, you know, the custom security policies and go in and set those things up. The convenience here is that you don't necessarily have to do that. So, um, but since this tenant does have Defender for Office 365, I'll have a few additional settings that are available. Um, so in this case, uh, I want to apply that protection to the previously selected recipients. So again, since in the previous step we selected everyone in the organization, this is going to apply protection to everyone as well. Um, the next steps, so it's going to ask me about impersonation protection. So add email addresses to flag when impersonated by attackers. So this setting, what it does is um, if we have uh, anyone in our organization, so we receive an email from the outside world and it's impersonating a specific user in our organization, then we want to handle that email differently than we would, you know, an email that comes in as anyone else. For example, uh, in this case, our uh, president of this company, uh, Patty Fernandez, we're going to make her... Uh, 
have this setting here, so I think it's Patty. So we're going to add Patty Fernandez because she's the president of this company. You know, people might email others within the organization spoofing her email and or pretending to be her by creating a you know, a, a Gmail account that has Patty Fernandez as the display name, uh, for example. This setting helps protect against that kind of situation. And uh, anyone in our organization who uh, is targeted in that fashion, so like we maybe regularly receive emails where uh, that user is being impersonated, then this setting is where we would uh, help prevent and control that kind of attack in our organization. Uh, again, this is additional configuration that you that we only have in this organization because this organization has that additional licensing for uh, Microsoft Defender for Office 365. Um, but still, it's good stuff. Good stuff to set up. So, uh, protected custom domains. Um, you can add additional domains. Uh, so, you know, we could have our own domain. In this case, it was just contoso.com, but maybe uh, <clears throat> we also have a, a partner, like you know, maybe protected, you know, maybe we want to um, make sure that emails that come from protected trust aren't impersonated, uh, for example. Um, so we could have had basically, you know, partners here, people that we regularly do, do business with, and most importantly, their email is set up correctly. So whenever they send email, uh, they have things set up like SPF and DMARC and, and, and DKIM signing and all of those things. So if we're a hundred percent positive that, uh, that this partner has their, their email set up correctly, then it would be a good idea to add them to this list. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend that you go uh, overboard with this, and and it's something where you can only add fifty domains to this list, so you kind of have to you know be be picky and choosy when you're adding them to it. So uh, the next setting would be trusted senders. So if you have uh, an organization um, that you intentionally use to impersonate your users, and you've run into problems receiving emails from that organization maybe you have like a a constant contact address or maybe there's a, a, a actually a really good example is uh like a gmail account so like patty fernandez for example if she wants to be able to email herself from her own you know like personal uh email account then you know maybe we need to add that uh that sender so, you know, Patty, the, the, you know, Prez at, you know, maybe, maybe that's her email address. So, so what that would allow, uh, by adding that as a trusted email address, so, uh, she wouldn't have difficulty e emailing herself from that personal email account. It would still make it into the, the tenant. So anyway that's how you would uh, enable trusted email addresses and all of those settings uh, after that defender for office 365 protection setting there um all of those settings are the ones that are only available uh, if you have that additional licensing otherwise you would pop right to the next setting which is the policy mode turn it on leave it turned off so in this case i'm going to go ahead and turn it on so this is gives us a little a screen where we can review and confirm any of those changes uh, that we've made. When we confirm, then it's going to enable that policy in our tenant. So we'll see in the tenant now standard protection is on. There's an option here where we could turn it on or off if we wanted to. Also, if we go into uh, just back into email and collaboration and policies and rules, and threat policies again, and then, you know, any of these policies. So we go and look in anti-phishing, for example, we will now have the standard preset security policy as a policy that's available in this list. So, okay. Now say if we have a user in our organization who uh, is maybe more problematic, maybe they get a lot of spam, maybe they're more likely to fall for phishing attempts. Um, maybe 
maybe maybe maybe just we just want to protect them a little more than than our other users so if we go back into our preset security policies you'll see that there is uh, also an option for a strict protection preset security policy so again if we go to manage protection settings uh in this case i wouldn't recommend that you use the strict protection policy against all of the users in your organization in my opinion it's it tends to be too strict for you know general business um but it's something that you could certainly uh, enable uh for uh specific users in your organization if they uh, are more uh, prone to being problematic than other users so uh, in this case we're going to pick on uh, adele and we're just going to add her to the list uh, again, uh, because this tenant has the office, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the Defender for Office 365 licenses, um, we're going to have some additional settings here. Uh, again, I'm going to use previously selected recipients, so it only applies to uh, the users that we selected in the previous step. Again, that was just this one user, Adele. Uh, I'm going to say next. It's going to walk us through the next settings impersonation protection again i would recommend that we set things up here the same as we did in the other one so we're gonna you know protect for emails that look like they come from patty fernandez uh you know we might want to add you know our own domain to this list uh or any you know important partner domains If we have trusted senders, uh, you know, in this case, Patty's probably not going to email Adele, so I'm not going to bother adding her to this policy. Uh, but if we had any trusted senders, uh, you know, we could add them to this list as well. Uh, again, I'm just going to turn the policy on and confirm. And that's it. That's, that's all it really takes to set up what is a decent baseline of email security for your organization um it's just you know a few clicks and there you go you're all set up it's certainly easier than going in and you know enabling uh you know a custom anti-spam policy though we do recommend doing so if you do have the licensing to do so um and that's that's pretty much it so um very simple very easy way for you to improve your email security have a great day.